welcome students to another exciting online lesson of the chapter 5 feeds and seeds we have already covered most of the interesting facts about seeds in the first part of course and we learned that seeds need air and moisture to germinate we learned the process of germination of seeds then we also learned about the process of sprouting we read about the parts of a seed. What we read was the hunting plants, isn't it? Hunting plants like winner's trap, pitcher plant and how do they make insects their prey. We learnt about dispersal of seeds. Different way of dispersal of the seeds. Today we will move to the other concepts of this chapter as well. Hope you are all ready and geared up for our next session. So, here's what we will start today. Should we start? Yes. This is a pea plant, okay? And when the pea pot bursts out, there's an explosion. And with the force, the seeds get carried away, okay? This is also another interesting way of dispersal. This is called dispersal through bursting. Some seeds just get an explosion. They burst out, okay? When the root is ready and then the seeds get thrown out of the place and they get carried away, right? Next, what we have? We have this innocent, beautiful creatures, isn't it children? Like they are so beautiful, they are so simple and I must tell you in this digital world, in this selfish world, these are the only free courier service available to us. Don't you charge anything for carrying the seeds from one place to another. Isn't it interesting? So whenever you see a bird, you know in summer season, whenever you see these birds, these birds are very thirsty students. So keep some water outside your houses for these birds. Let them get some water in this hot dry summer season. Anyhow, these birds are also an uh, interesting way of dispersal of seeds. They carry, you can see how beautifully they are carrying the seeds in the beaks. They eat some and they throw some and the seeds are dispersed of course. Now, next we have a very interesting activity for you. There are some questions which are set according to the chapter which we have already read. Let me see how much do you remember and what you have understood from the chapter. So here is the question. First we have dash was shown in the picture getting dispersal through outburst. Do you remember what it was? Okay, I'll come to you next. Let me go through the next question. Name some forces of nature which act as agents of dispersal. It was very simple and very easy, isn't it? Next question, to protect seed, one cover is there. It is called dash. The next question we have is, name some living being which help in the process of dispersal. Do you remember them? Last one, this plant was shown in the picture which hunts through trap. All these questions are so interesting and so easy. I know all of you would have already solved this, but still then let us just check it whether you are right or wrong. So let me uh, tell you the answers. The first one, which picture was shown where this person was done through outburst? Yes, it was a pea plant, isn't it? So the pea was shown in the picture getting dispersal through outburst, through the explosion, okay? Now, if we are talking about the forces of nature which act as agents of dispersal, we had two elements of nature, wind and water. Did you get me? Yes. These are the forces of nature who act as the agents of dispersal, right? Now, the next question was to protect seed, one cover is there. What is it called? Do you remember? I told you in the beginning, it is the seed coat. Okay, it is called the seed coat. It's a dry outer external cover which protects the seed inside it. Next question was, name some living being which helps in the process of dispersal. We have it, animals and birds. Let it be dogs, let it be squirrels, let it be birds. These all are living beings and 
along with that sometimes we the human beings also are responsible for this process of dispersal we also do it sometimes knowingly or unknowingly isn't it and the last question was which plant was shown in the picture which hunts to a trap the name itself says it venus trap isn't it so here are the answers and i do hope that you all have understood the chapter very well now there is something for you people to do from which you will learn and you will get a clear picture of what actually is seed germination and how it gets carried what you have to do you have to take a pot and you have to take some seeds so you have to take different pots for different seeds okay you have to plant one seed in each pot now you should make a table right and you should note down on which date did you plant on which day could you see the first shoot now after some days how much was the difference in the height of that plant so these observations you have to make and then you will get to know how does a tiny seed turns into a huge plant okay next what you have to do this is an also interesting activity for you all children you should collect as many seeds as you see around you let it be in the kitchen you will find you know cumin in the kitchen zira you will find uh, aniseed in the kitchen which is called sof and there are many other like chickpea gram uh, lentils are there moong dal is there you will find a lot of varieties of seeds in your kitchen so go to them and collect them now what you have to do you have to divide them into groups now you select your groups how many different groups can these seeds be divided these seeds can be divided into different groups some seeds can be edible like the seeds which can be eaten some seeds could not be eaten right you could divide the seeds according to their shape size and color isn't it white seeds yellow seeds black seeds right now also you can divide them based on their dispersion way how the seeds are dispersed the seeds which are dispersed by wind is a different group the seeds which are dispersed by animals and birds is a different group and the seeds which are dispersed by water may be a different group so try to find out the different groups of seeds and you will find it very interesting okay now here is the journey of seeds from a small seed to a big plant isn't it interesting now you could see how interesting it is as the growth of a human being from a small infant to a crawling toddler then to a boy then he becomes a young man and then he gets the responsibility of his families of his life of his job and then he becomes old slowly slowly gradually and then he goes away from this world similarly the seed also has a journey when it was just a seed then it was planted in the soil and slowly it grew up into a shoot and then slowly slowly gradually it turns into a plant and then into a tree so this is how the journey of the seed is carried away so much interesting and so much to learn from our nature which is just around us because if there would not have been a seed we would not have been in this nature we would not have been an environment like this so it is again and again requested to you people to take care of this environment which is so beautiful which is so peaceful we should plant more and more seeds isn't it now students let's revise whatever we have learned so far do you remember what we learned yes of course we started from the story of gopal and we learned that seeds need air and moisture to germinate that was the process of germination of seeds how do seeds germinate seeds germinate with the help of air and moisture right then we also learned about the process of sprouting how a seed becomes a sprout it is with the help of moisture of course and air and we have to put the seeds into a wet 
and damp cloth or cotton. Next, what we read? We read about the parts of a seed. Seed includes seed cover, food bag, cotyledon, radical and that is a seed and it sprouts. Next, what we read was the hunting plants, isn't it? Hunting plants like Venus trap, pitcher plant and how do they make insects their prey. Next, we learnt about dispersal of seeds. How seeds move from one place to another and are carried away to different places. Next, what we read was about the agents. Who are responsible? How are these seeds dispersed from one place to another? Wasn't it interesting and all fun? Yes, we have also done activity. Do you remember the chana activity, the experiment where we had put the chanas in three different bowls? Yes, it was interesting and we learnt what was required for the seeds to germinate and to become sprouts, right? So, this is all what we learnt today in the chapter 5, Seeds and Seeds. So, hope you have enjoyed and learnt everything whatever is needed to learn about our environment and about seeds. Hope you have understood everything and you will do the activity as it was instructed to you. Hey students, here is an interesting poem. I hope you will learn it and you will enjoy. But let me tell you what is this poem all about. This is a poem about what came from where. You should know the potato, tomato and green chilies came from South America. Isn't it interesting? Cabbage and pea came from Europe and from Africa came ladies finger and coffee beans. So they came from Africa and here were our Indian fruits, mango, orange, banana, spinach, methi, radish. So these all were found in India and these fruits here welcomed those they came from the other countries. Isn't it so much fun and interesting to know these facts? You should know these fruits and vegetables also came from which country. So here is the poem. Hope you will learn it and enjoy. Keep enjoying. Here we come to the end of our chapter Seeds and Seeds. I do hope that you have all understood it very nicely and would definitely implement it in your lives. What we have to implement is, we have to plant more and more seeds around us. Then only we will find a beautiful green world to live in peace and live happily. That's all for today. Hope you will enjoy and keep smiling as you always do. So keep waiting for next interesting chapters to come and stay safe and stay happy. Thank you.